Pulling threads from lace headers. You will want to pull th threads out of lace headers in order to make the headers more lacy and open. This is pretty easy to do. A thickly woven header will have lots of longitudinal running threads. You will want to go in and pull out every other one. This will greatly open the pattern of the header and make it a very decorative piece of lace. In this bodice we are trying to utilize every possible way one section of a four inch wide piece of lace. These wide laces are frequently thought to be unsuitable for miniature dolls. What I want you to realize through this exercise is how many different ways you can cut and fragment lace in order to make it more useful. This particular lace has a very wide header at the top. By pulling the threads out we will make it a very decorative collar for the doll. You simply pull one thread at the time and use the thumb and forefinger of the other hand to work the lace header back away from the thread. Take your time and be sure not to pull two threads side by side as this will leave an unpleasant gap in the header. Usually in a wide header I will remove four to six threads in order to open it up so it has a less opaque appearance. Now we will put the lace header aside and start working on our bodice. Constructing the lace bodice. This is a direct drape method of making a yoke. We've taken a piece of our lace and first we're going to make the center back. I took thick tacky glue and ran a bead down the center back and now I will fold the lace over against itself and pinch to make a crisp line. After that I will quickly fold the lace back over on itself to make a finished back fastening section for the bodice. If you were going to wear this gown in real life it would have to open down the back. Now I need to make the holes for the neckline. I make a simple U-shaped cut, fold it open, and double check it on the actual doll. I hold this in place. Now I am coating glue on the back of my hand. This way I can get a very even coating of glue on the fabric. I take the fabric, I pat it into the glue on the back of my hand, and I peel it off. The resistance of my skin will keep the glue from filling the holes in the lace. Place it on your doll. Use your fingers to pat it into place. Next you will be taking your scissors and you will be cutting off the excess at the shoulder line and around each armhole. Because this will be covered with the shoulder seam of the front yoke piece, this does not have to be horribly precise. Just cut flush and nip off any ragged edges.
But if you have any pieces that do not adhere, just put a little bit of glue and dab carefully. Now we are cutting the section of lace for the front piece. I'm cutting off the top of the header and I will save that for another project. I'm using the more light and delicate piece for the first section of the front of the bodice. Again, I'm using the glue on the back of my hand. Pressing in my lace. Gently removing from my hand and applying to the doll. This front bodice is done in two sections. I'm going to put this piece of lace just above the bust line stretching from one underarm to the other. I will use my scissors and cut off all the excess. The front fabric of the bodice will not come. Let me rephrase that. The front fabric of the bodice will overlap this bottom edge. This gown will not be as low cut as it is currently seeming to be. But the bit of the overlap will give the garment a little bit more structural integrity. As God willing, these things will live 100 to 150 years. Any ragged edges that are not glued down, just dab with glue and press firmly. We are now ready to start the next phase of the front bodice. Take our fabric and this time we're going to utilize the more decorative edge on the bottom. Line it up so that it will overlap and cut a rectangle larger than you will need. Hold it in place so it lightly overlaps the bottom edge of the bodice. Pinch with your finger where you're going to want the U-shaped cutout to accommodate the neck. Now take it and refit it to the top of the bodice. Take your scissors and cut off the excess at the shoulders, leaving enough of an overlap that you're going to be able to fold over the edge and make a mock seam at each shoulder line. Remove your piece, examine it closely. If you notice that it does not seem to be symmetrical on the sides, double check your fit, as sometimes the lace will slip as you're cutting it. After double checking, make any adjustments necessary. In order to make the mock seam at each shoulder, we will run a line of glue along the back side of the lace piece. And then carefully fold over the edge. You want to make this a very slight seam. If you do too much of a fold over, it's going to look very heavy on the doll. You want a minimal fold over effect preferably no more than one sixteenth of an inch. Basically as small as you can possibly get away with doing it without leaving a raw edge at the shoulder line. Once you've finished both shoulders, you will be ready for the next step. Press gently. And for the next step, we will again take the glue and coat the back of our hand. Take the lace bodice and press into the glue on the back of your hand and pat with your fingers in order to get good glue adhere. Press 
Removing the lace will again strip the glue from the open patterns of the lace and leave glue just on the threads of the lace itself. Use your fingers and pat in process, making sure that you get the yoke fitted high enough that the shoulder seams will cover the raw edges of the back of the bodice. After you line up both shoulder seams, then it will be time to pat the rest of the bodice into place. Use your scissors to cut off any excess lace that may be protruding below the armholes. It is very important not to have extra fabric extending below the shoulder line and building up around the armholes as this will keep you from getting a flush fit of the arms up to the bodice. Next we're going to take our lace header that we set aside and make the neckline. Run it around, measure it, and then slice. Make sure before you glue around the yoke with the neck piece that any edges are firmly glued down because you will not be able to go back and improve these segments once you put the choker of the bodice in place. All these shoulder adjustments need to be made now. Okay, if you're now happy with your piece, run glue along the back of your header and gently pat into place. You're overlapping the bodice slightly so none of the raw edges show. Fingernails are great for pressing the bottom firmly into place. If you lack fingernails the back edge of your embroidery scissors can be quite effective for the same deed. Take your scissors and cut as flush with the back as you can. You are now finished with that part of the bodice. The only part that's left is to add a little bit more lace trim to the front. For this we take our small embroidery scissors and cut out just the scalloped edge of the lace. This is tricky, but it can be done if you proceed slowly. Do not try to do this in advance because as soon as it is cut out you will want to apply the glue and affix it in place. If not, this will have a tendency to fall apart. If you just cannot seem to cut the lace edges out without the fabric falling apart, there is a trick you might wish to consider. You can take your lace and spray it with cheap hairspray and allow it to dry thoroughly before cutting the lace into segments. This frequently will help a fragile lace survive being cut into pieces. Again, we are putting glue on the back of our hand. We're putting our cut scalloped edge in the glue. Because of the thinness of the piece, we're going to use a tool to tap it into the glue. You wish to work quickly in this instance, because you need the glue to be relatively fresh in order to adhere it to the doll. Now, we're going to take the scalloped edges we're going to line them up with the previous scalloped edges so that the interior of each scalloped edge makes an oval. This makes a highly decorative effect on your doll. Pat firmly into place and set the doll aside to dry for at least an hour.
After you have allowed the doll to dry, the next step will be going over the scalloped edge with a hot steam iron. I like to use an actual iron for this purpose because the weight of the iron gives me quite a degree of pressure. This basically will make the adhesive glue behind the lace act like hot glue as it melts under the pressure of the hot iron. This ensures that my adhesion to the doll is as perfect as possible. With lace that you have fragmented into very small sections, the hot iron pressure is very necessary in order to get a good bond. If not, the edges of the lace could begin to lift over time and cause significant deterioration. Please note I am doing this on a porcelain doll. If you sculpted your doll out of polymer clay, the last thing in the world you want to do is to go over it with a hot iron as you will scorch, melt, and possibly deform the polymer clay body. This is strictly a porcelain technique. On to an Edwardian hairstyle. I have taken viscose fiber that I have already pleated in a rubber pleater. Directions will come with the rubber pleater so I did not see any reason to do them here. You want to gently tease the fibers apart with your fingernails. This loosens it so that when you glue it into place the coverage is even and not thicker in some sections and lighter than others. After carefully separating and loosening the fibers, tear off a section that is approximately a quarter of an inch wide. Run a bead of glue along the back nape of the neck and start gluing your viscose on in quarter inch wide segments more or less. You take your fiber, you press firmly into the glue, and then you add more glue on top of the viscose and work the glue through the fibers with the tip of a toothpick or the back of your fingernail. You want to be sure that the glue actually coats all the fibers. This will keep the wig from falling apart at a later date. See how the glue is carefully pushed in with the toothpick. You want to press with your fingernail or a sharp metal instrument right where the hair meets the glue line so that you get a nice crisp line of hair when you pull the hair up into the upswept do. Now we're going around the ears. And don't try to do too much at a time. You need the glue to be very fresh for this to work well. So you basically just want to carry cover a short distance at a time before going to the next. This is my new doll, Belle. And as our video tutorial project, I wanted to do her once as a 1908 graduating student and then the next one will be a 2008 graduating student. I do believe, however, I will leave off the belly jewelry. Some modern trends just don't need to be commemorated.
<coughs> Again, go back and tease more hair apart with your fingers and just gently pull off a small hank at a time. Please note, hair is my least favorite part of making a doll. If you already happen to know a better, faster, easier way to achieve a good wig, please use it. I sometimes feel that the viscose sticks to everything in the world but where I want to put it. I have fooled and around with the silk fiber, also referred to as Tusha silk, and while I really like the way it glues better, I have found over time it does not seem to hold a curl as well as the viscose. Because of that reason, I have a tendency to leave it for long loose hairdos, or hairdos that are more tight and configured as it is an excellent fiber for making tight braids. For the Edwardian hairstyle, we're going to do an upsweep with a bun with a few curls on the nape of the neck and a few loose tendrils around the front. We're looking for elegance with a hint of softness. When I do use the rubber pleater, I do not always push the viscose into each and every pleat. Sometimes I'll skip a pleat, as this gives a variation to the wave of the viscose, and to me is a bit more pleasing. Yes, this is a trifle time consuming, but quite frankly, I haven't found anything about dolls that isn't. You do wish to be very careful when applying the glue line to the hairline simply because this hairline will show when you pull the hair back and up into a bun. These particular toothpicks are found in the United States in what is called a dollar store and are made from bamboo. I have found the toothpicks made from bamboo are less likely to snag the viscose than the toothpicks that I buy that are made out of hardwood. But the hardwood toothpicks are much better china paint erase erasers when you're china painting. When you make a mistake, they're excellent to use as a wipeout tool. For some reason, the bamboo do not fare quite as well in this exercise. After you have glued the hair all the way around the circumference of the head, you need to go back and double check and make sure that you don't have any thin spots that you need to add extra hair. Just the act of the hair radiating out in a circle from the scalp can sometimes lead to thin areas. After you have the hair glued all the way around, set it aside to dry for an hour before going to the next step. There is no such thing as too much glue 
when it comes to applying the ends of the hair to make sure that they stay in place. Your fingernails are excellent for making sure that the viscose is worked all the way into the glue. You don't want just the bottom layer of the viscose sticking to the glue and the middle section not being adhered. This is a Lean's Tacky Glue, which is my favorite general purpose glue for making dolls. It's the Eileen glue that comes in the gold bottle. For the next step, after the previous layers have dried, you will want to smear glue all the way around the top of the doll's head. We're going to take a thick curl that we formed around a knitting needle and then heat set in the oven at 275 degrees for 30 minutes to act as what used to be called a rat. Rats were made with loose hairs that were pulled out of the hair each day when brushing and then they were formed into a loose ball around the hair. Basically, this gave the customary Gibson poofiness to the hairstyle. We mimic this by gluing around a thick curl. After you've glued on the thick curl, you'll want to set it aside to dry for at least an hour before attempting to bring the hair up to the top of the head. Simply cut off any excess as you bring the long curl to the back. You can press the curl into place with the tip of a toothpick. It can now be set aside to dry. Before pulling the hair up into a bun, you will want to lightly tease the fibers apart with your fingers. This way when you pull the hair up into a bun, you will be sure to get good coverage. Without spreading the fibers apart, you will have a tendency to have some thin and some thick spots. Gently stroke the fibers upward, or in this case downward as the doll is being held upside down, and gently twist loosely together to have some idea of what your finished hairstyle will look like.
this will let you know how loose you want to hold the hair as you pull it up. Depending on personal taste, this can be quite different. Now that I've made my decision on how tight I wish it to be, I will open it back up and add glue all around the crown. And then I will start the process of molding the viscose into place. I like to use the back of an X-Acto blade to tuck my hair fibers into the glue at this stage. But first I must get the glue in place. I gently tack the glue up a few strands at a time. You can use a toothpick or the back of an X-Acto blade to spread it out so you get good coverage. Because I want this hairstyle to be rather loose, I'm not pulling the hair up and tying it off in a ponytail format at this stage. I will actually glue up the upsweep and allow this glue to set and then take brass wire and make a firm ponytail where I will form the bun. You want to find a movie? If I tried to do the ponytail just now, it would not work adequate for the purpose. Star Wars. Okay, now we have voiceover in the background and I apologize. I did not realize that did not reset. Okay, that means I need to double check for the next time we're recording that the audio function is actually off. Not right this moment, okay? Oh well, enjoy. Okay, press gently. As you can see, it is beginning to develop some shape and scope. I'm just gently folding into place with my fingers and pressing down with a sharp implement to make sure that I have good adhesion. At the moment the hairstyle looks a little wild, but trust me, once it is formed into a bun, it will be quite acceptable. A little bit of extra glue, wherever you need extra adhesion. And be sure when using a toothpick to press into place that you're using a clean, fresh toothpick. Here I am sharpening the impression with the X-Acto knife. This makes a good firm bond.
by not pulling the viscose too tightly, we leave the wave that we made in the pleater. Pulling it tightly and the wave would have been stretched out. I'm examining the doll to see if I'm happy with this stage, cutting off any loose fibers, and now I will